What's going on everybody? Little Chris here, and today, let's start learning how to play pool. To start this lesson off, we're going to begin with the stance. A lot of players that I've seen don't have what I believe to be the proper footwork when it comes to lining yourself up to prepare for a shot. What I like to do, since I am right-handed, I always like to place my right foot right behind the cue ball in whatever direction that I'm going to be shooting. In this particular case here, if I were to lay my stick right in line with the cue ball, you can see that my right foot is basically right underneath the cue stick, which is also right in line with the cue ball. Next, with my left foot, all I'm going to do is take a slight step forward. My feet are pointing about a 45 degree angle to the right since I am right handed. This allows me to just bend down and prepare for the shot. And I am very well balanced and my knees are slightly bent. For left handed players, the opposite would be that your left foot is now behind the cue ball in the direction that you want to shoot. Now if I place my cue stick in line with the cue ball in the direction that I want to shoot, you can still see that my left foot is underneath my cue. With my right foot, I will take a slight step forward and have my feet pointing at a 45 degree angle to my left this time. With my knees slightly bent, I can now bend over and address the shot. This gives me a well-balanced stance to be able to perform any particular shot. The grip hand is used to hold the back end of the cue or what is known as the butt of the cue. The placement on the grip hand is usually guided by a wrap that is either made of linen or leather that I've seen. But for Sneaky Pete's and your typical bar cues, there won't be a wrap, but you'll generally know where to grip because it'll be somewhere behind the points of the cue. In some cases, I have seen where the grip hand can actually be all the way back here at the back end of the cue, particularly when you are stretched across the table to perform a very long shot. But for the most part, your hand should be, appear almost anywhere where the wrap is. So when you're actually addressing a shot, whenever your cue stick is this close to the cue ball, your hand should pretty much be right underneath your elbow, forming about a 90 degree angle between your shoulder, your elbow, and your hand. This is what allows you to create a backswing and a forward swing that will allow you to actually hit the cue ball when you follow through. Some of the more common mistakes that I've seen beginning players do is that they will have their hand too far back when they're this close to the cue ball, almost leaving them no ability to perform a backswing unless they rotate their shoulder, which I don't really recommend. The only thing that should be moving is your elbow. The other mistake is that their hand is too far forward. This allows them to still have a backswing, but they don't really have much of a forward swing unless again they rotate their shoulder to go all the way through the cue ball, which you don't want to do. Because again, the only thing that you want to move is your elbow. So in general, you want your hand to be pretty much near your waist or hip side and form a 90 degree angle between your shoulder, your elbow, and your hand. This is what would be a basic grip. The bridge hand is used to balance the shaft end of the cue when you perform a shot. There are two types of bridges that you will see when your hand is actually placed on the table. The first most common one is the open hand bridge or what is commonly known as the V bridge. You start by placing your hand onto the table, arch your knuckles up to where you can create a triangle between your fingertips, your knuckle and the palm of your hand. Take your thumb and place it right next to your knuckle and you'll notice that it actually creates a V between your thumb and your index finger knuckle. That V 
is where you're going to place the shaft end of your cue. Now where your bridge hand actually is on the table will be highly dependent upon where the cue ball is on the table, if there are any balls in the way, and what is comfortable for you. What you generally do not want to do is to have your bridge hand so close to the cue ball because then you really have no room to actually swing the cue. You roughly want to be almost about six inches or half a foot away from the cue ball in general. The second most common bridge that you'll see on the table is the closed hand bridge. Just like with the open hand bridge, arch your fingers to where your knuckles are face up. Take your index finger and point it up in the air. And then now take your thumb and place it right next to your middle finger. With your index finger, place the tip of your finger next to the tip of your thumb. And do you see this little opening uh, that is above your middle finger that is created between your index finger and your thumb? That is where your cue stick is going to go, or the shaft end of your cue. So all I'm gonna do now is open up my index finger, slide the cue in there, and then close my index finger on my thumb. So now the cue stick or the shaft end of the cue is actually resting on my middle finger and on my thumb. This is a much more stable bridge because there is really nowhere for the cue to go unless I let go of the cue, which you do not want to do when you perform a shot. When you're performing the V bridge, the most common thing that players can do when they shoot a shot is pick the cue up off of their hand whenever they finish a stroke. But with a closed hand bridge, that cannot happen unless they let go of the cue. Again, which is something that you do not want to do. So as you progress, I highly recommend that you eventually learn how to use the closed hand bridge for almost all of your shots. Every now and again, you'll find yourself uh, alternating between an open hand bridge and a closed hand bridge, depending upon which is best for you for the shot that you're about to take. The other types of bridges you might use is when the rails are involved. When the cue ball is this far away from the rail, what you're gonna wanna do is place your cue on the table along the rail. With your bridge hand, take your thumb and place it alongside the cue stick. Next, take your index finger and wrap it around the cue. Then take your middle finger and just snug it up on the other side of the cue. So you have your thumb and your middle finger on the left side of the cue, while your index finger is on the right side of the cue if your bridge is your left hand. If your bridge is the right hand, it'll be the exact opposite. When the cue ball is this close to the rail, then you want to use the open hand bridge, but you don't want to do it by placing your hand on the table. Here, you can see that I'm roughly too close to the cue ball and don't really have any room to swing. What I basically like to do is take my fingertips and put them at the very end of the rail or the end of the table, which means the palm of my hand is now floating in the air while I have the V bridge and I have all this room to swing. These are the only two common bridges that I've ever seen perform on a rail. The last thing I would like to leave you with is how high your head should be above the cue. For myself, I like to be this close to the cue. This allows me to look down the shaft of the cue through the cue ball at the ball that I'm going to shoot at. Some players I've seen will actually get low enough to where the shaft of their cue will actually be rubbing right up against their chin. For me personally, I find this to be rather uncomfortable. I've also seen some players shoot where they're this high above the cue. I find it rather puzzling that they're actually able to shoot rather well this way because they would have to be looking over the cue ball at the ball they're, they're going to shoot at. For myself, 
I would rather be looking through the cue ball, down the shaft, and at the ball that I'm going to be shooting at. When you put all of this together, now you're ready to actually perform a shot. Thank you all for watching. Hopefully now you have a better understanding to the form that you would use when playing the game of pool. If you like what you saw, give me a thumbs up and don't forget to hit the subscribe button as I will have plenty more videos to come that will hopefully improve your knowledge and your skills at this game. Take care, everybody.